right guys, so if you remember, we've previously gone over um, how to analyze an article, make sure it's a scholarly source and that all the information is accurate and nothing's false on there. Um, so we, we remember that we use the CRAAP test. So that stands for Currency, Relevance, Authority, Accuracy, and a Purpose. So I asked you guys, or we asked you guys to go and find your own article and point out all these different aspects of it, find the claim, the reasons, make sure it passes the crap test. So I'm gonna go over the article that we talked about before about global warming and just kind of go through it. We'll point out all the different aspects of the crap test. So first is currency. So right here, it says that it's February 2014. So we know that's within the past year. So it's pretty current. Um, relevance, it's about global warming. So it has to do with what we're talking about. We read the whole article, we already know that. Authority, it comes from Science Magazine, which is a scholarly source with tons of facts about science. So we know that it's pretty well known. Um, accuracy, it's all about all the resources, we'll show that at the bottom of the thing though. And then lastly, the purpose. So what's the purpose of this article? The purpose is to inform us about global warming and the different aspects that humans have been playing on it. So, review the claim and the reasons. So if we sit here and we read this, we go through, and we said that the claim is usually in the first paragraph that will introduce the main topic of the paper. So here the claim would be that estimating the human contribution to the regional temperature change and extreme events. So this is saying that human contribution is a big deal in the effects of global warming. Um, and then if we keep reading through, we want to find our reasonings behind it. So reason number one would be greenhouse gases cause steadily increasing, well, yeah, increasing warming that is stronger over land and the ocean, than the ocean. So greenhouse gases are a huge contribution to global warming. And then if we keep reading on, we can see that, oh, this is different than my article printed out. Did I go too far? No. All right. And then reason number two I came up with, the combination of volcanic eruptions, oh, I guess the combination of volcanic eruptions and changes in the sun can thus be estimated that it's part of the reasoning for global warming. So this is saying that volcanic eruptions are bringing all these gases into the atmosphere and the sun's heat is changing on our earth so it's contributing to the global warming. And then lastly it says right here Human influence can also be detected in temperature changes over individual continents and in many regions. So this last part, reason number three, is saying that humans have a huge contribution as to why global warming is occurring. So you guys went out and found your own articles. I want to hear from you and some of the things that you found in your articles. Does anyone want to share? Yes, Erin. Well, my article was talking about how we need um, more improved um, economic models of um, climate change or global warming. Uh, it's peer reviewed from the spring of 2014. Okay, so what, what part of the crap test does that pass? Um, credibility? It's currency, relevance, authority, <laughs> accuracy, or purpose. 
That would be currency, right? Because it's current? Yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Um, so it's, and it's a scholarly journal from, uh, it's called Nature News and Comment, so I know that a lot of people from this field um, contribute to this magazine or, or this journal. So that's authority. Yep. And basically the entire article is, it first discusses um, the economic costs of global warming, but then it starts to go through about a lot of the variables and how the models that we're using um, to basically analyze our data, um, needs they need to account for more of those variables. Like like you were saying, how um, the sun is changing um, on the in the, the heat that it puts on us and whatnot would be like a variable. Yeah. Um, All right. And then were you able to point out a claim and reasons for it? Well, their um, their claim is just that they need to have better models because of these other variables okay. and um, their reasons are um, because you just can't um, you can't predict um, what like these possible variables that could occur um, I, for example would be like the uh, um, weather variability or population growth or how extreme we start to convert into um, alternative energy sources. Right. Awesome. Would anyone else like to share? Melissa. Okay, so my article is from a scholarly journal uh, that talks about global warming specifically. Um, and the article I looked at was talking about um, increases in discharges of nuclear waste into the sea and then um, its main point goes into how um, global warming well it says global warming is not the result of human activity but a natural occurrence um, within a 100,000 year planetary cycle um, according to Robert as in high a uh, professor of energy conservation at Ohio State University Okay. That's interesting to me. That's one that your article says that it's not human contribution, and then this one's focus is that it is contribution. Yeah. So there's obviously a bunch of different research out there that shows different opinions. Mm -hmm. And it talks about like how this is a cycle and how some studies, um, um, this guy's studies argue that humans are responsible for a comparatively small amount, less than 5% um, of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Um, it's like from, it's like human caused. So, but there aren't like any graphs or like direct like, statistics. And okay. that's not about how like, reliable it is. Okay, okay. Great job, guys. Mm -hmm. Really glad that you caught on to how to find an accurate uh, article and make sure that they're factual and not just opinion based. Um, so I know in the beginning when we first started talking about global warming, we asked you guys if you thought it was a real thing or not. Have your guys' opinions changed at all since we, after researching it a bunch and talking about it more as a class? Um. Well, originally my my opinion was that it exists, but I didn't know to what extent um, or what really impact humans had. Um, and I would just have to say, like with my research, that I have a stronger um, belief in that. Yeah. So there's a lot of proof that shows that global warming is happening, right? Um, have is there any interesting facts you guys learned that you'd want to share with the class? Yeah, Erin. Um, I found out that since the Industrial Revolution, like, first introduced, that um, they've been taking um, carbon and oxygen samples and they've been tracking it. And I looked at a few graphs and I've seen how much, like, the amount of CO2 has, like, increased in the atmosphere. Um, since then. Yeah, and that may, it makes sense, right? Because all these new factories are being built and all the gases and chemicals from these factories are being shot into our atmosphere. So that makes perfect sense now to think about it, right? Awesome. All right, so now I want you guys to tell me 
Can you guys think of any possible solutions that could prevent global warming? Uh, well, not really a full solution, but I was just, I guess because I was reading this article that was about like if global warming is more of a natural thing, um, maybe if we somehow like cut back, um, even like in part of the world, like on um, like emissions um, from cars and stuff, and saw like how that affected global warming to see if it is um, like a natural thing or if it's caused most of that human. Yeah, that's a huge deal, you know, especially here in the United States. We're a first world country. We take advantage of the fact that we can have cars and put all these gases into the atmosphere. And in a lot of other countries, they don't have that. So you'll notice if you look it up, on your, you can, just can look it up on your own time. But if you notice, if you look at like a graph or something, you'll see that in the United States, the gas emissions tend to be a lot higher than in other countries. All right. so. I found a really cool app for you guys that I want you to kind of check out. Um, you can do it during work time on the classroom iPads. You can do it at, on your own time at home. But it's really cool and it just kind of shows uh, a map of the world and how the temperatures on Earth have increased in the past couple hundred years. So if you guys have time, I want you to check it out and I'll walk you through it as a class and we can show you how it works. Thank <laughs> you.